Today I'm talking about Procreate's 10 best features, so if you're new to the app or just want to get the most out of it, check out these tips. This is a remake of a video I did on this channel a little over two years ago when I was just getting used to Procreate, where I shared some of the things that really helped me get comfortable with the program. Now, why am I redoing that? A lot has changed in Procreate over the last two years. For example, back then I had to use brushes to get shapes. Now they're automatically in the program. So I thought it was worth revisiting since about half of those tips have either changed or just out of date or aren't the best way to do it anymore. So with that said, Let's roll. A lot of programs have something called a fill tool, often referred to as the paint bucket tool. And what that does is if you have a large area and you want to fill it with paint quickly, the fastest way to do it is to grab that tool and fill it on in. Now at first, it doesn't look like Procreate has this tool, but it actually does. All you need to do is if you have an enclosed shape is take your color swatch in the upper right hand corner and just drag it in and drop your color and you've completely filled it in. Procreate refers to this as the color drop tool. I'm gonna shrink my brush size down a little bit and draw another one, and I'm not quite gonna close that circle in. As you can see, I've left a little space here. Now, if I drag that color out and I drop it in, what happens? It fills everything because there was a hole there. Now, sometimes when you have a tiny little hole like that one, there is a way to plug it. Now, check out what happens. If I take this color, I drag it in, but I don't pick up my pencil, there's a blue line along the top right here. It says color drop threshold set to about 50%. If I move my pencil down while holding it on the canvas, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna tighten up that fill tool. So it's gonna be able to ignore some of those tiny little holes. So sometimes you want that color threshold up, sometimes you want it down. So if that's the case, why wouldn't you keep it down all the time? Well, let me show you. I have a new layer here, a new brush here. So what happens when I have something with a fuzzy edge attached to it? Check out what happens when I drag my color in there. And when I do, it leaves this, let me zoom in, this little white halo effect you can see along the edge. Sometimes you wanna knock that out. So the best way to do that is let me undo that really quick, is I'm gonna drag that color in, I'm gonna hold my pencil down, and this time I'm gonna drag that color threshold up. And the higher up I get that color threshold, the more of that white halo around the inside of that line that's gonna get rid of. Tip number two is reference layers. Now we already know how to use the color drop where I can just drag any color into my line art and fill it in and color it in that way. But what if you want your color to be on a different layer than the lines that you're using? Well, that's where a feature called reference layers comes in. It is really cool. Let me undo that color. Let me open my layers. So my ink layers are on layer two in this case. And so I want layer two to be a reference for all of my other layers. Let me show you how it works. It's easier to demonstrate. So I'm going to tap on that layer, brings up a, a list of options. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on reference. Now I'm gonna tap on layer one. That's where I'm gonna stick all my colors. So now when I grab his skin tone and I drop it in there, it's dropping that color on a different layer. And I can go ahead and drag and drop all of my colors in and get those in there. And now you'll see when I open my layers, if I toggle off that top layer, you can see I'm turning off my inks, but I am keeping that bottom color in check. That's really nice. So now I can go ahead and I can create another layer. And if I wanna add some highlights or something to that, I can go in, I can select a different color, grab a, a nice ink brush. And now on this other layer, I can go in here underneath it and do that. So that lets me keep my colors on all sorts of different layers and add layers underneath my ink lines really nicely. Procreate also has selection features and copy and paste features. So say I wanna select my line art, I'm gonna make sure that I am on the right layer to begin with, and then this tool up here, this little line tool, this is my selection tool, which will allow me to select something just using my pencil. There's different ways to do it. There's automatic selection, freehand selection, just gonna use freehand for now because what I wanna do is I wanna duplicate this line art that I have here. The fastest way to do that is to take three fingers and swipe down on your canvas and that's gonna bring up this menu. Now you can change that menu and change that three finger swipe into something different but by default, this is our copy and paste menu. I can cut, copy, copy all. In fact, I could just go straight to copy and paste and it'll just drag that and stick it on its very own layer right here. And from there, I can grab my arrow tool and move around my new selection that I just pasted in. Now, like I said, that is the default. If you wanna change it at any time, there's this wrench in the upper left-hand corner. In there, there is a selection called preferences. 
and down here there is gestures control. And here you can do a lot of different customization and really setting up your own workflow. Next up is gradients. There is no gradient tool in Procreate, so you kind of have to hack it a little bit. I use gradient brushes, which come in really handy. So if I go ahead and tap on my brush, I have an entire section dedicated towards gradients. I've called these Brad gradients and I've made them myself. So if I tap on one of those, you'll see how it works. I can go anywhere and I could just tap on the canvas and create my gradient. And then if I want to, I can increase the size of that, move that off to the side. And now that gradient is almost covering the entire canvas. Now this is a little bit of a hack and I wouldn't be surprised if in a future update, Procreate finds a way to add gradients in. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's in the very next update they do. They have been adding in a lot of features as they go. But right now, this is my workaround. If you want my brushes, you might already have them. I sent them out in my last email newsletter last week. They're totally free. The email newsletter is free. In fact, if you subscribe, you'll get those right away in the first email I send out as one of the freebies. All right, how many is that? What? Only four? Hold on, quick intermission. I hope you're enjoying these tips. I have a full Procreate course over on Udemy. If you're looking to master Procreate and really dive into the details, don't pay full price. I have a discount code. It's down below in the description. Anyway, that's all I have. On to the rest of the tips. Next up is a feature called Alpha Lock. So what is Alpha Lock and, and, and how does it work? Well, let's take a look at it. We've got a nice orange going on here. And say we want to add some texture to it. So I go to my color, I grab a deeper shade of red, then I go to a brush, find something with a nice texture to it, and then I come in here and I add some texture to the edge of my orange. Now, as you can see, a lot of that texture is bleeding off the edge. What if we just want to color in the shape that already exists? That's where Alpha Lock comes in. So I'm going to tap with two fingers a couple times to undo all that. Going to go to my layers. Going to make sure I'm on the layer that I want to color in. If I tap on it, one of my options here is Alpha Lock. I'm going to set that, go back out. I'm on my brush. And now when I paint, all of my paint is just going to fall inside the shape that I already have on my canvas. Next up is adjusting the eyedropper tool. At this point, you've probably already figured out that if you long press for a while, you'll get this nice eyedropper tool, which lets you select different colors on the fly. Pretty handy. But you'll also find that if you're drawing really small, short details, sometimes that eyedropper appears before you want it to appear. Well, good news, there's a way to change all that, and it's in this wrench icon up here. So let's go ahead and tap that. And then we're gonna make sure we're on preferences, and we're gonna go down to gesture controls. Now, all of these have settings, and the one we're looking for is eyedropper, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And down here, we have a delay. If I want that eyedropper to appear later, I slide up that delay. Now it's going to appear after 1.32 seconds, or I can drag it down, and it'll appear right away if you want the eyedropper to appear more. I like to set it, uh, I don't know, right around there. And now when I tap and hold, it appears pretty quickly for me. So how do I draw a straight line in Procreate? It's actually really easy. In fact, if you draw any line and hold your pencil at the end, it's going to snap into what is called a quick line. Now, there's a lot of stuff we can do with a quick line now that it's here. Say we want it a, a perfectly straight line. If I take a finger and place it on the canvas, it's going to snap at different angles. So as I move my pencil down, now we've got a perfectly horizontal line, and I can move it at different increments uh, and snap it into place. And at any time I can lift my finger and I can free form that line as well. You also notice up here after I let go, it says edit shape. So if I tap on that, it's gonna give me something kind of like vector tools that lets me grab each endpoint and move that line around. Also very, very handy. And like all tools, we can adjust how quickly that line appears. If that line is appearing too quickly for you, you can always go to your wrench, you can go to preferences, you can go down to gesture controls. And there is a section here called quick shape. And here we have our delay, very similar to the delay on the eyedropper. We can set that to whatever we want. Next up are shapes. How do I draw a square? How do I draw a rectangle? How do I draw a circle, a triangle? Well, it works the same way as a line. In fact, instead of just drawing a straight line and letting it snap into place, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle and we're going to let that snap into place. And now I can change the size of it. Now, like anything else, putting a finger on there creates a perfect circle for me as well. And if I let go, there is an option to edit the shape. So it's very similar to what we just did with a line. So if I click on that, it lets me take any of these points and move them around and modify that ellipse. 
So let me undo all that and get rid of my lines here. And of course, this works with any kind of geometry in any kind of shape. I want a triangle, I can let my triangle snap into place. I can also edit that and grab my different sides and move those different sides around. If you want a square, it's the same exact thing. I can draw my square, and if I want it to be a perfect square, again, one finger on the canvas, and now it is snapped to a perfect square, and I can move it anywhere I want it to be. And it's kind of cool because you could do some really wonky lines. You know, I could do something like this, and it's going to snap into place, and it's also going to be editable. So if I want to close that shape when I'm done, I could just take one of the endpoints, move it where I want it, and move any point around anywhere where I need it to be. Now there is one caveat. Once I leave this, it's no longer a, a vector shape. I no longer am going to be able to edit these. So once I tap on that, or once I tap off of that, this is just paint. I can't go back and edit this shape. Now Procreate has a ton of gesture controls, and one of them is being able to merge layers. You could always tap on a layer and go down here and say merge down, which will merge it with the layer below it. But there's a faster way to do this, and that's just by taking two fingers and squeezing down on your layers and combining them that way. So while we're here, I should talk about canvas size. By hitting this plus button, you've probably already noticed that you can create your new canvas. I have a lot of different sizes. It pre-populates this with your previous sizes that you've created, or you could just create custom. And from here, if you need something to be specific to inches, centimeters, millimeters, you can do that. Same thing with your DPI. And also this is an opportunity to name your canvas before you get going. One thing that's new to Procreate that's worth pointing out is you can adjust the size of a canvas after you've created it now. A lot of people who do landscape art will often find that they're creating something and they want their landscape to go off the canvas a little bit more or they got the perfect thing going on and they want to crop it in. Now you can do that. Like most of the settings, that is up here in this wrench. So if I tap on the wrench and then I go to this canvas setting, I have an option for crop and resize and that lets me basically crop and resize. It's pretty simple and it's also going to tell you that as you increase the size of your canvas, it's going to tell you how many layers you get. So that's something you should be aware of too when you're resizing things. And then when you're done, you just click done. It crops your canvas, takes a second and you're good to go. If you enjoyed these, please like, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget my Procreate course. There is a discount down below. That is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.